Good morning, Royal City Community Church. How are you today? Thank you, Jesus. And look outside. It's just a beautiful, beautiful day. And we get to rejoice and be glad in it. I just want to just share something with you this morning. I shared it last week before we opened up in, in worship. We welcome you, those of you who are watching us online. We welcome you to Royal City Community Church. We thank you that this is the house of the Lord, and this is the place that God is dwells and his Holy Spirit moves and in power and authority and we're thanking God for what he wants to move and say in us today. I just want to encourage you this morning church to raise your expectancy. Build on your expectancy for this new season that we're in. And I read Isaiah um, 30, 43 19 last week and it says for I'm about to do something new. See I have already begun and that's where I want to stop right there that God Dupe was praying and I was like, wow. She was just saying some of the things that the Lord was showing me in the week that God is going to do a new thing in our season. It doesn't matter what season you're in. It doesn't matter. And I'm not talking about the weather, the fall, winter, and, and spring and summer. I'm talking about the season of your life that you're in right now. He says, God says, see, I have already begun. Do you see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wastelands. And that's whatever area of our lives that are dry and are not prospering and not fruitful God says I will make a way for you I will open up those doors I will open up those windows I will pour out a blessing upon you for I'm about to do something new and I want you to see it so Father we thank you this one that we're going to look with eyes of faith we're going to trust you we're going to lean on you we're not going to lean on our own understanding and we're going to acknowledge you and almighty God you will make all things straight for us and we thank you we exalt you. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise that's due your name, Jesus. We thank you that we get to come into your presence and we get to lift you up. We get to worship you. We thank you, Father God. Ezekiel 37, 4 says this. Then he said to me, prophesy. And that's what God is encouraging us to do in this season. Prophesy to those dry bones. Say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign law says to these dry bones. I will, I will make breath either enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come, come to life and then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Let's stand to our feet. We're gonna give God the praises to his name this morning. These are the days of Elijah. Church, we're going to declare the word of the Lord today. And these are the days of your servant Moses. Righteousness being restored in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
the one who is, and you are the one who is to come, oh God. And we thank you that we're in the position to move forward with you, oh God. We thank you that we're not stagnant, Father. We're moving, we're growing, we're changing, we're transforming, even when we don't see it yet. You know when a carrot is growing? You barely see any orange on the outside. You know why? Because it's growing deep down. Deep down. So you might not see what you hope for yet. But God is working. God is moving. You're growing. You might not be growing out yet. But you're growing. And so you know that your God is moving, so you're moving forward with Him. You're not going to stay behind. You're not going to stay stagnant. You're going to allow Him to continue to do a good work in you so that that work will be completed. So Father, we thank you for this moment that you have brought us through. We thank you for the freedom, our year of Jubilee, oh God. The freedom we have in you. Because you're the one who makes all things new. You said, Behold, I make all things new. Revelations 21, 5, I think. I make all things new. This morning, let's just trust in the work that God is doing. Hallelujah.
situation to judge and then I read my devotion my devotion said when God starts a work it might look messy you know construction rocky you would you would this will resonate with you when you're walking doing drywall and all that stuff it looks messy while the work is being done so if you keep saying but it doesn't look good but it doesn't look good but it doesn't look good, you know, they put the windows in, the window pane is there, but they've not sealed the edges, they've not done it looks, doesn't look good. That's because the work is not finished. And God is simply saying, child, let me finish. So if there's nothing else you remember today, when you find yourself in those trying situations and circumstances when things don't look like how you desired or how you had hoped or how you expect, just remember God is saying, I am still moving, I am still working. Let me finish. Take me at my word, trust my word. Let me finish. And yes, so I got. I, you know, God is so gentle when He disciplines us. So then I repented. And then I said, okay, we're going to sing the song. So then I messaged Rocky and Ross much later in the day, though, I must confess. I still didn't message them in the morning. <laughs> so we can take God as His word this morning because His word is unfailing, His word never fails. His word never fails. When he says it, he brings it to pass. He doesn't return to him back void. It accomplishes that for which he was sent. Father, grant us the grace to persevere with your word. Grant us the grace to be patient with your word. Grant us the grace to be persistent with your word so that we can stay with you till you finish what you have started. Hallelujah.
Cause I've seen, I've seen how good it works When you started, you completed I'll take you at your word If you said it, I believe you said it, I believe you Cause I've seen, I've seen how good it works Oh when you started, you completed. I'll take you at your word. Oh, what does your word say, oh God? What does your word say, oh God? Your love, thank you, Jesus, is more than enough. Neither death, nor life, nor principality. Not powers, not things that are, not things to come can separate me from your word. That is what your love says. Your grace is always enough. Your grace is always enough. For my sufficiency is not of you. It is of you, it's not of me, it's of you, oh God, who has made me able to minister. Your grace. It's more than enough. You are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think or imagine according to your power that is at work in us. Your grace is more than enough, oh God. You said your heart will never leave me nor forsake me. Your heart will never leave me nor forsake me. I am never alone. No matter how dark it looks, even when it looks dark, it just means I'm hiding under the shadow of your wings because you said you will never leave me. You will never forsake me. Your heart will never leave me. Your heart will never forsake me. You said I am saved. You called me yours. For you said I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who have been called into his marvelous life. You said I am saved. And you call me yours. I am yours, oh God. And you are mine. You said my future is full of your hope. For I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a future and to give you a hope to bring you to an expected end. For my Expectation shall not be cut off. That is your word. I'll take you at your word. I'll take you at your word. You've never failed. So why would you start now? I would be the first one you're going to start with. Neither of, is anyone in this place the first one you're going to start with. You've never failed. And you will not fail us now, oh God. You will not fail us now, oh God. Because we present our case with your word. We present our case with your word because you're good on your promise. You're good on your promise, oh God. So we make that choice to take care of your word. I'll take you at your word. If you say Until the 
till the day of Jesus. He who started a good work in us will finish what he has started. For he would start it if he's not going to finish it. If he allows you to go in the fire, he's going to be there with you to deliver you. If he allows you to go through the waters, he's going to be there with you. Because he said he will never leave you, will never forsake you. The water is not going to drown you. If he allows you to go in the lion's den, then he's going to be there to shut the mouth of the lions. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. We take you at your word. We recount your mighty works, O oh God, and we take you at your word. We take you at your word. We take you at your word. We take you at your word.
And as Duke was saying earlier while she was praying, when we started the service, God, forgive me when I've not taken you at your word. What is it that you're standing on? What word has God given you? What seed have you planted? What faith seed have you planted? Do not let the enemy steal that from you. You have planted seeds of faith. And yes, it will come to pass. Take him at his word. Trust him. Wait for him. Do not run ahead of him. Just wait for him. He's a man of his word. Father God, Lord, we thank you. Great is your 
Oh, I stand amazed in your presence. 
stand amazed in your presence, oh God. Where there is joy for my sorrow, there is peace for my anxiety, and there is hope for my hopelessness, and there is strength for my weakness, and there is faith for my doubt in your presence. In your presence, I stand amazed. Because you do mighty things. You do great things. You do glorious things. You do marvelous things. You do supernatural things. You do exceedingly abundantly. Thank you. 
feet And I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment We never want to leave satisfy our needs, to satisfy our flesh, 
to satisfy our emotions. But God, I just want you to know today, He is more than enough. You are more than enough. He is all you need today. Let's not even be concerned about tomorrow, because tomorrow has its own issues. Let's just be concerned about this moment right now. Let's just be concerned about wanting more of the Father, more of the Son, and more of the Holy Spirit. Let's just be more concerned about what matters right now, because nothing else matters right, right now, this moment. We just want you, Lord. We just want you to move. We just want you to have your way. We just want you to stir our hearts, draw us closer to you. We want to draw closer to you. We just want you. We just want to get caught up in your presence, Jesus. We just want to sit here at your feet. Nothing else will do, Jesus. Nothing else matters and nothing else will do. But nothing else you remember from today, just remember that. We just want to get caught up with him. We just want to sit with him. We just want to rest with him. We just want to be at peace with him. We just want you, Lord. Nothing else will fill that place. Nothing else has. We've tried. We've looked. We've searched. But just you, you alone will fill that place, that, that void, that need, that anxiousness, that anxiety, that depression. You, you're the one that we need. It's you. We've been calling on everybody else. We've been calling on everything else. But it's you that we need. It's just you. It's never been anybody else. You first. Yes, we thank you for others to come and impart in our lives and pray and agree in prayer and stand with us. But you are all we need first. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are all we need right now, this moment. This is a moment that you and God, Holy Spirit, can speak into your life right now. As Pastor David said, we're in no rush. The Holy Spirit is not rushing us. The Holy Spirit wants you to wait on Him. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. Some of you haven't heard the Holy Spirit speak to you in ages. But this is your moment. This is your moment.
good. God is good. Well, let's give him a praise talk off. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. today. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. You've never come to that place of asking Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. And well, I'm here at church today. Doesn't that count for anything? Well, you know what? <laughs> yes and no. If you've not come to that place of making that decision, saying, hey, you know, I can't do this in and through my own strength and my own power, I need Jesus Christ. In my heart, I need him in my life today. Doesn't matter how young you are today. Doesn't matter how old you are today. If you never come to that place of asking Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, I want you to lift up your hand right now. Anybody. Doesn't matter how young you are. Doesn't matter how old you are. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody can say, I've been in church all my life. Well, yeah, you can be, but that doesn't mean you're born again. You've not come to that place. Today is the day of salvation. You lift up your hand. Anybody, young or old, doesn't matter. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I just pray that each one here today has that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's that dynamic relationship. And it's a growing, growing. relationship. Right. And yes, it's a yes, thriving yes, yes, yes. relationship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, Father God, I just pray for each one today, Lord God. And you know where we are in our walk with you, Father God. And, Lord, I just pray for each one here today that you continue to draw them closer and closer to you. God, we're not content... We're not satisfied with where we are in our walk with you, Father God, but Lord, we want to continue to press into you. We are pursuit of you. God, as long as we've got breath in our lungs, Father God, we are going to be following hard after you. And so I pray that over the youngest and the oldest, Lord God, that their hunger and their thirst and their desire for the things of you for you will not abate, will not slacken, will not diminish in any way whatsoever, Father God. We praise the name of Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. God's good. All the time. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thought of opportunity to pray for people in the church today. We just thank you that hands were laid on. I just pray and thank you that the power of the Holy Spirit, whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, healing required, breakthrough, whatever way, whatever was needed. We thank you, Lord. The answer's there and it's on its way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to just quickly draw some announcements to your attention this morning. Uh, just letting you know, reminding you that, of course, we have different times of prayer, that you're able to come and join us for prayer online on Tuesdays uh, through Zoom. If you're interested in being involved with that, you can give me your email address and you can, uh, I can send you that information. You can hook them up with us on Tuesdays. We also have drop-in prayer here Thursdays uh, from 11 till uh, noon. And so if you're not comfortable going online, you can show up in person and you can be here from 11 till noon on Thursdays. Also, a reminder of those that are taking part in the, uh, the, the Bible study, we're going through the book of Joel. Uh, we've got actually to chapter 2. <laughs> <laughs> Took us three weeks. We got through chapter one in three weeks. We're now working on chapter two. So uh, that continues this, uh, <laughs> this Wednesday night here, 7 o'clock in the sanctuary. Uh, so kind of, I don't know how far we're going to get into chapter two this week, but come prepared. At least read chapter two. You'll be ready for whatever we're going to be discussing. Praise the Lord. Just remind you that there is a food fellowship coming up on, I believe it's the 20th of October. 
It's a few weeks from now. Uh, it's after the Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, but I think Thanksgiving Day is the Monday the 14th. So that next Sunday, uh, we're going to have a food function. We're going to be doing the Harvest Soup Lunch. Uh, always enjoy doing that. We have a number of, as I said last week, a number of soups that are brought. I'd like to try all of them because uh, they're all so really, really good. But my wife will be talking to those that are going to be involved with that uh, and have a soup prepared for that Sunday, right after the morning service. Also that Sunday, we're going to be acknowledging all those that celebrated a birthday or an anniversary in the months of September or October. Anybody? Birthday, anniversary, September, October? <laughs> You I might know. I see. I see those hands. Oh, I yeah. some hands. There oh, you go. Yeah, there you go. Happen. So birthdays and anniversaries, September, October. We're going to be celebrating that on the 20th of October. Uh, the table over to my right. I want to thank everyone that yeah, has come you. and brought the uh, donations, the Elizabeth Fry and the Union Gospel yeah. Mission. Yes, thank you. I always forget the Union Gospel Mission. Uh, but thank you. We've had the entire month of September to respond to that. So big, big thank you to all of those that were able to help out. We're going to get that out to them hopefully this week. Also, there's a number of tables, in fact, three tables over to my left. One of them has got cassettes. If anybody still has a cassette player, <laughs> God bless you. But there's cassettes <laughs> over there of a Bob Nichols series. You can take those if you want. They're free. There's some other books on the center table under the Behold the Lamb. Those are books are free as well. But the table to my far left here, there's three different books on there uh, that we've had available. We've had these in storage, and uh, we want to make, uh, get them out to people if they want to have those available to them. Uh, there are, two of them are soft cover, one's hard cover, but the, the price is very, very inexpensive. One is for a dollar, you can see the pile there. Another one is for five dollars, and the hard cover is for ten dollars. So. Uh, the hardcover alone, I think, is like 20 something dollars US, so it's a deal to be able to get that for $10. But please, if you want to look at those books afterwards, you can pay the cash for that. That would be fabulous. I don't think there's any other announcements, Roz, are there? Hmm? It would go in the email. It would go in the email. I will send it in the email. There you go. All right, praise <laughs> the Lord. I'll get you to stand with me if you will, please. My wife keeps making hand motions to me. I don't know what she... I'm not very good at charades, Roz, so there you go. We determined that a long time ago. Anyway, it's supposed to Father, as we go out to this place today, we go out in the strength power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. We thank you for what you're continuing to do in each heart and each life, Father God. And so, Lord, again, as always, we thank you for the people that you're bringing across our path, Father God. Allow the life of Christ that's on the inside of each one of us, Father God, Break forth, shine out, whatever needs to be done to those that we come in contact with, Father God, so that, that Christ is magnified, you are glorified, and you are honored. We praise and thank you for that now. We give you glory for it now. In Jesus' precious name, everyone in agreement said, amen. Amen. amen, amen. I forgot the offering. There you go. I knew. Oh, she's making money. You should have.